Welcome to the Solo Player Strategy Guide for building the Wonder Weapon on Firebase Z. A guide that is so simple to follow, now say it with me, a, a boomer, boomer can do it. it. Alright, let's begin. The most efficient way to build this Wonder Weapon is to turn on the power while collecting these pieces and completing the tasks simultaneously. If you do not know how to turn on the power and open up Pack-a-Punch on this map, then go ahead and click the card in the right hand corner that will pop up right now, or Look for the link in the description to follow my other easy boomer guide. That being said, I'm going to explain this Reike crafting video as if you already know how to turn on power and open up the Pack-a-Punch. So here we go. While turning on the Aether Reactors, grab the blueprints for the Reike from the weapons lab, which is right in between the motor pool and the data center slash rocky defense. You'll see the blueprints located right above this bench that's on screen right now. And just to note, Everything that's pretty much important in this map, whether it's from the main Easter egg or an upgrade quest, most of these important pieces will be highlighted in a yellow glow. Anyways, I digress. After you've picked up these blueprints, you're going to want to head over to the Scorched Defense area, which is right outside of the Mission Control building, where we have turned on one of our three reactors, just so you have a frame of reference. And you're going to want to pick up an eyeball from our friend Dimitri Kolokai, who is located in the Scorched Defense area, on the right side, sitting in front of a tank, completely dead. There'll also be a little yellow letter next to him. You're gonna wanna go ahead and pick up both of those and grab his eye, which there's a little cutscene, so you don't have to do anything. The game will take care of it for you. Once you have the eyeball in your possession, you can take it back to the weapons lab where we picked up our blueprints prior. And now you can place the eye in the mechanism next to the computer for a retinal scan. After the computer recognizes the retina, a key will pop out of the drawer in front of that computer. Take that key to the barracks area of the map, which is by the middle gate near the tombstone soda. Inside of these barracks, you will notice these lockers, just like ones we had in high school, and you just need to open them. When you open them, most of the time you won't hear anything or see anything, but when you do hear a gasping, spooky sound effect, that means a mimic boss enemy has spawned in and you will need to kill it in order for the Mimic to drop a part for the Ray Rifle. If the first Mimic doesn't drop the part, then just try again by opening a locker, listening for that sound cue, and kill the second one. The second one will always definitely drop the part if the first one doesn't. Now for this next part, I recommend doing this at the end of a round, and if you can, leave four zombies for yourself at least. This way you don't have any zombies sprinting at you because if you have three zombies, they will sprint at you. But you will also have a minimum amount of zombies in the game so you're not getting surrounded and hit constantly because you're going to have to stand still and look at some stuff. So head back to the weapons lab and pull up this image I'm about to display on either your phone or another screen and I'm going to have it linked in the description for you so you can download it. And shout out to Blackmagic675 for creating this image on the COD Zombies Reddit. When you get back to the weapons lab, interact with the computer and you will see a circle on the screen begin to show you a code. The circle will have a teeny tiny sliver that moves around on the screen and will stop at three locations. All you have to do is remember them, but this is where that chart comes in handy. All you have to do now is just simply match up the locations the pie sliver has stopped on with the circle in this image that I've displayed on screen. And then, when you are ready, head back to spawn. Oh, and by the way, you can have this computer show you the code as many times as you want. So that way, if you forget or a zombie gets in the way, it, it you, you won't mess up. It's very forgiving. And if you are still having a hard time, I recommend using the Aether Shroud to hide yourself while you are watching the screen so that nothing interferes with you. So now that we've made our way back to the spawn point, you're going to want to head over towards the Wonder Fizz machine, and if you haven't already, make sure you activate the Pack-a-Punch. But you will notice a little dartboard on the wall next to the Wonder Fizz machine. And you will need to shoot the numbers that match the pattern the circle on the computer showed us. So in my game, the computer stopped at 16, 19, and 12. And then I matched those pie locations on my little chart, and I walked over to the startboard and I shot 16, 19, and 12. But you have to shoot the bullseye after you shoot these three numbers. You will notice that the dartboard opens up in the center and the next part for the Wonder Weapon pops out. People were saying that you had to have a pack-a-punched gun for this, but that's not true at all. You can use whatever gun you want for the most part, just not shotguns or burst rifles. Now I know this seems kind of tedious, but once you complete it once or twice, 
It's pretty simple, and you'll probably remember most of these steps. But now we are on to the last part of the Wonder Weapon crafting quest, and this is where I've been seeing the most misinformation. Up to this point, you can complete basically the entire crafting quest by round six or even earlier if you're super good with points. But now you just need to play the game like normal until round 15 when a mangler spawns in. Normally, the mangler will spawn in 100% on round 15, but in this particular game footage that I have, which is the first time that this has ever happened to me, the mangler spawned in on round 17. I'm not really sure why. I think it's just RNG, like with the Panzer spawning in on Derizendrak. Anyways, mangler is important because he will drop an energy cell for you that you have to use for the magazine on this ray rifle. And this is the part where people have been spreading fake news. You can 100% get the energy cell from the mangler first try, no matter what. There is no random drop. He will always give it to you, but you have to shoot his hand cannon. The trick is to shoot the hand cannon arm and the energy cell will drop. The reason people fail the step are for a few reasons. They either miss, they have an insta kill on which just screws everything up, or they go and pick up a nuke drop or something like that and it just destroys them completely. So just shoot the hand and you'll be fine. I actually recommend using a weaker weapon because sometimes if you miss with your pack-a-punch weapon or something very strong, you end up kind of doing more harm than good and if you can have something that just laser focuses on that cannon you're usually going to hit it 90 percent of the time now that you have the final part head back to the weapons lab for the second to last time and set the energy cell on this workbench next to the dead guy sleeping and the armor weapon station when you place the energy cell down here you'll notice a prompt on your screen letting you know that this is where you need to charge it Come back two rounds later and the magazine will be fully charged and you can turn around and build the ray rifle at the table behind you where you grab the blueprints and started this all in the first place. As far as we know, there is no side quest to upgrade this weapon any further and if you want to make the weapon stronger, you just have to pack a punch it like you would any other weapon. The last thing I want to go over is how to use the weapon in case you don't know already. The first way you can use the weapon is just by straight up shooting it like any other gun. But there is a secondary feature, and actually a tertiary feature, but in order to access that, you want to press up on your D-pad or B on your keyboard so that you can change your ammo type. The weapon will then shoot out these energy balls that will slow down and kill your enemies. However, if you can convert back to your regular ammo type quickly enough, you can shoot these energy balls to set off a mini explosion killing all in your path. All in all, I really enjoyed this wonder weapon. I think it's very fun and satisfying to use, and the sound effects on it are just great as well as all the animations anyways that's going to do it for this solo strategy guide and if you learned something new please leave a like and if you didn't enjoy yourself well then tell me why in the comments down below and remember this guide is so simple that even a boomer can do it all right see you guys in the next one peace